So to make your digital camera look like it was actually shot on film, we need to add a few characteristics to our footage. So number one, the color grade. Now this clip was filmed on a Panasonic camera in the V-Log profile, which is a flat color profile you can film in on your camera to get the most dynamic range out of it. I have used the V-Log to Rec 709 conversion LUT to bring back the contrast and colors in the image. If your footage was filmed in a standard profile, you don't need to do this. Now in film, you don't get true whites or true blacks. They both have a washed out look. So what we're going to do is replicate this. Open up the Lumetri color panel, making sure your clip is highlighted. You can either add the Lumetri color as an effect by going into the effects panel and clicking and dragging it into the effects control panel, or you can open up the Lumetri window. Okay, scroll down and open up the RGB codes. And I'm going to click and drag down the whites like so and click and drag up the blacks as well. We're doing this to break away from the digital look of blown out highlights and fake like we have more dynamic range. Perfect. Next, we're going to add more contrast and make an S curve. This is way better than the contrast LiDAR because we have a lot more control. So click here and decrease the blacks and click and increase the whites to create an S curve. Nice. As you can see, we've added more contrast to the whole image, but our skin tone is not looking good. To fix this, I'm going to isolate the color of the skin and add a color correction to it so that it looks more natural. The first thing I'm going to do is open up the Lumetri scopes by clicking on the window and selecting Lumetri scopes. Now right click on the scopes and select vector scope. Now I want to isolate and extract the skin color only so that any color changes I make only affects the skin and not the whole image. In order to do that, I'm going to go into the effects controls panel and in the Lumetri color, I'm going to select the HSL secondary 12 down button. Then under key, select the set color dropper. And on the image, I'm only going to select the color of the skin. Then I'm going to select the show mask button to reveal what color is isolated. Then I'm going to move around the HSL parameters to extract the skin color like so. Yep, I'm happy with that. I'm not going to worry too much about the extra bits around the frame that have been selected. Now that I've extracted the skin, it's time to make adjustments to its color. In the vector scope, we have this line in between the red and yellow colors. This line is called the skin tone line, and we want to make sure that these pixels go along this line. So what I'm going to do is scroll down to the color wheel under the correction and move the cross so that the pixels are on this line. Yep, that's good enough for me. And as you can see, this is what it looked like before the skin correction. And this is what it looks like after the skin correction. Now to me, the skin tones just look a bit more natural. So before and after. Number two, bloom. Movie shot on film have a bloom effect in the highlights. So to create this, I'm going to duplicate the original clip by holding Alt, click and drag in on top of the original clip. Select the clip on top and add the Luma key effect to it. So come over to the effects panel, type in Luma, drag it into the effects controls panel. Then I'm just going to disable the bottom clip in video layer one. Then I'm going to set the cutoff to 100, then take it down to reveal only the highlights. The Lumi key effect acts as a mask, so whatever we add next to it will only be applied to the brightest parts of the clip. Add the Gaussian blur effect and make sure it's below the Lumi key effect. If not, this effect will not work. Then I'm going to set the blurriness to 100. You can set this to whatever you want. The higher you go, the more bloom you'll get. This is the before and this is the after. Number three, halation. Halation is the red or orange halo you get around the edges of lights or the brightest part of your footage in film. And to create this, all you have to do is add an adjustment layer by clicking this and selecting adjustment layer. Press OK. Placing the adjustment layer above both clips. Then add the channel blur effect. So effects panel, type in channel blur, click and drag into the effects controls panel. I'm going to select the red blurriness channel to 20. Then under opacity, I'm going to set the blend mode to lighten. And now you can see our footage has a slight red halo around it. You can decrease the strength by either decreasing the opacity. Now, bearing in mind, as soon as you add the channel blur effect to the adjustment layer, it will tax your system. Number four, film grain. Now, film grain is not noise. Film grain is natural organic film particles that are produced when the film is exposed to light. Noise, which digital cameras produce, are digital pixels that randomly move around the frame. Since film grain is natural, we're going to use a free overlay from this website called TDCAT. I'm going to download all five and use the 16mm heavy film grain. So hopping back into Premiere Pro, drag the film grain overlay on top of all the clips, then go to opacity, select blend mode, 
and select a soft layer. Now here's a side by side comparison with and without film grain. Number five. Aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is the pixel width and height of the image. So you can have 235 to 279 to 16 by 9. I'm going to add a 235 to 1 aspect ratio overlay to the footage. I have a free cinema aspect ratio pack to download, which includes six letterbox templates. Click the link below to download, and that's it. That's how you achieve something that looks like it was shot on an actual film camera. Now, obviously, there are plugins that do a much more accurate and better job of this, but I'll cover that in the next tutorial. Take care. Goodbye.